for me, beauty is a very strong component. I do see beauty in math, in, in theorems. It's an allegory, right? It's a euphemism. You can call it taste. Some things are tasty. And what makes it taste is a particular combination of molecules or whatever that some combination of neurons that get, gets you excited. There's always this discussion of Platonic versus Aristotelian. I perceive us as discoverers of the existing math structures. Aristotelians think that they construct structures. I think that they're right, but to keep myself going, I have to convince myself that we are discovering rather than building. At the end of the day, I don't know if math exists. Maybe we do think it up, but I don't want to think this way. I want to believe that we have discovered it. Dennis Gatesbury, most of my career I worked at Harvard. My dad started feeding me math when I was about 13. I was not very receptive for some reason. And then my family emigrated to Israel and I wanted to go to university in physics. But I was still a high schooler and in Israel there was a program who accepted people in high school to university, but only in math. So my dad said, okay, why don't you go and study math? It's really important as foundations. And after a year or two, switch to physics. So that's what I did. And after two years, I was completely seduced by math. Robert Langlands is a Canadian mathematician who had been working in number theory. At the end of the 60s, he discovered a pattern. The geometric Langlands conjecture is a particular statement, hypothesized, but it hadn't been proved before, that connects two objects in algebraic geometry that on their own don't lie too far apart, but the connection is very unexpected drew upon ideas from some geometry, some algebra, some what's called category theory. It was the combination of elements. You consider a beam of light and you can decompose into a spectrum, like the rainbow. Different colors correspond to different wavelengths with different amplitudes, different strengths. It's called a spectral decomposition. In Langlands, there are two geometric objects and one of them encodes the spectrum. So what we call the spectral side, they have to do with loops winding around two-dimensional handle bodies. It's a long shot from wavelength to these loops, but that's what they are. That's the nature of the spectral decomposition. That's the spectral side. And then there is the geometric side. In some sense, these geometric structures are more alive. Alive is the word. They're kind of more playful objects. This is more difficult to give a layman description of. There are more intricate objects. They also have to do with the geometry of a handle body. In fact, the same handle body that appeared on the other side. A two-dimensional object. Imagine a bagel or a pretzel with two handles, or these kind of things. And imagine loops going around it. Imagine some kind of forest growing on its surface. This forest has a name. It's called Bungi. That's my internal picture of the object that appears on the geometric side. To this particular wavelength on the spectral side, they correspond to something very particular on the geometric side. Geometric Langlands constructs a bridge. One can get a richer structure thinking about the geometrization of the Langlands program, and that's what geometric Langlands is. My team and I have recently completed the proof of the geometric Langlands hypothesis. I've been working on the geometric Langlands 30 years. There were years when the progress was slower, but I don't think there was ever protracted frustration. Never crossed my mind to have any doubts. Just never. The first time I heard about the Geometric Langlands program from Sasha Bellinson, it was maybe the first piece of real research math that I felt a deep connection to. It struck me that, oh, this is the thing I want. There was never a moment of choice. It wasn't a deliberation, oh, should I work with this, should I work with that? It was an imprinting. I was compelled to do this. That Bellinson lecture gave me this immediate imprinting. I felt like a duckling who wants to follow this area of math. It's an awful thing to say, but COVID, for many mathematicians, gave us a break so we could stop our busy lives and think. And that's where this precursor to this proof of geometric Langlands appeared. This is a paper of six authors, which led to the project of Sam and Joachim, which was the breakthrough that led to the proof of geometric Langlands conjecture. Okay, so you drew Langlands conjecture, so what? It's not that that proof connected areas of mathematics that haven't been connected before. That's not the case. It's rather tools from various areas of mathematics have been brought in to prove the conjecture. Primarily representation theory, some math physics, and a lot of uh, algebraic topology. It's hard to imagine how to apply them in number theory proper. So something else needs to happen for these applications to take place. It may have long-reaching applications. We've built a structure that explains the pattern, how it works. However, in the process of doing this, we proved many, many theorems. And one can imagine that some of these theorems may be useful in their own right without any connection to Langlands. The next big thing, which is what we call the ramified case, is a whole new set of ideas, and it will be even more technical. 
So I don't know if I'll have the energy or tenacity to do all of it. I'm not 20 years old anymore, but we'll see.